In the prehistoric depths of the Amazon, a giant predator once ruled. This beast, bigger than anything like it alive today, would have been capable of preying on almost anything it wanted, and its role at the top of the food chain had some remarkably dramatic effects upon the very ecosystem the creature was a part of. This was Purosaurus, the giant caiman of the Miocene. There are actually three different species of Purosaurus known today, with the first species to be named, the type species, being Purosaurus brasiliensis. In later years, Purosaurus nivensis and then Purosaurus mirandi were also named and described. Clearly, it's quite obvious from the fossilised remains of the creatures that these were big animals. Purosaurus therefore joins the ranks of other genera of giant prehistoric crocodilians, including the Cretaceous Age Sarcosuchus and Dinosuchus. However, there are some interesting anatomical differences that make Purosaurus stand out as potentially even more terrifying than these other organisms. According to a particular study from 2015, which analysed the length, mass and bite force of Purosaurus brasiliensis, this beast potentially had one of the most powerful bites amongst all tetrapods, as well as being the heaviest crocodilomorph to ever have been recorded. These results were obtained through the use of calculations based on examinations of living caiman species, as well as data from all of the 23 currently surviving crocodilians. The study concluded that the caiman could achieve masses of around 8.4 metric tons, with an incredible bite force of just over 69,000 newtons. Additionally, the total length of the animal was estimated from the fossil remains, being placed at 12.5 metres. Purosaurus possessed a snout that was far broader and shorter than that seen in the Cretaceous giants Dinosuchus and Sarcosuchus, and as a result, a much bulkier neck with stronger, larger muscles would likely have been required by the animal to support the front of its skull, resulting in the increased mass of the animal. However, the methods used in the study to calculate the weight, bite force and length of Purosaurus have been brought into question, as there may have been an error with the exact measurements of the fossil skull material. In this case, the total length of the species is brought down to 10.9 metres, the mass is reduced to 5.6 metric tonnes, and the bite force is 52,500 newtons. Still remarkably impressive figures for such an animal though. Unfortunately, the only good fossils currently known for Parasaurus are skull material, making a reliable estimate of total body length pretty difficult to arrive at. But, the skull still preserves a lot of interesting anatomies that have allowed paleontologists to gain some fascinating insights into this extinct caiman's lifestyle. Teeth are especially good at telling us a great deal about an organism's way of life, and the adaptations visible in the teeth of Purosaurus are therefore highly valuable to our understanding of the whole creature. While there are differences between the teeth of all three Purosaurus species, they are all relatively similar in size, and appear to curve slightly backwards and inwards. This makes the teeth very well suited to piercing and smashing, in addition to making them more resistant to breaking when they come into contact with hard materials such as bone. Ridges that have been observed on the teeth too would also enable the structures to better puncture and slice flesh, and these features lead to an overall view of a crocodilian that preyed upon other large-bodied vertebrates. Some of the other adaptations identified in the skull of Purosaurus include structures that potentially aided the animal in dealing with the huge cranial forces brought about by the immense bites. One of the most notable skull characteristics of the caiman is the large external nerus, or nostril, which takes up a great deal of the rostrum itself. This big space and the particular nerus bone anatomy that accompanies it have been interpreted as a way for the significant forces brought about by the jaw snapping shut to be dissipated without damaging the skull and hence enabling Purosaurus to attain the colossal bite forces that have been calculated for it. So, we know that this organism was incredibly big and powerful, and it had some very elegant bits of morphology that facilitated its lifestyle, but what would the world that this caiman ruled over have looked like? Well, the Purosaurus genus existed throughout the majority of the Miocene Epoch, and therefore would have inhabited the mega wetland systems located in the drainage basins of northern South America that were present during this length of time. The ecosystems in this period were incredibly diverse, with all sorts of other vertebrate fossils known from the same locality representing a myriad of animals which populated the vast rivers, swamps and deltas of the region. In fact, the crocodiliform record itself is pretty diverse in these areas throughout the Miocene, meaning Purosaurus would have shared its habitat with other smaller caiman species, in addition to large gharials and other giant crocodilians, and even certain species of fully terrestrial crocodiliforms. This has actually led to some interesting suggestions as to why Purosaurus grew to such large body sizes. It may have been an example of niche partitioning. 
by becoming the apex predator of the ecosystem and getting to dimensions above any of the other predators of the area, this would have enabled adult Purasauruses to avoid coming into serious competition for food, as the genus had now specialised to feed on bigger, more particular prey items unavailable to other species. And there are some more characteristics of the teeth that have also been identified as supporting the idea of niche partitioning in Purasaurus, such as these caimans possessing relatively quite stout teeth to increase their strength. Along with the other adaptations I mentioned earlier, this would seem to indicate that these reptiles developed an increasingly strengthened dentition which then would have helped them prey on larger vertebrates that different predatory species were not able to. These prey items could potentially have included large fish known from the same formations, different kinds of pelicaniform birds, giant species of turtles with shells reaching over 3 metres in length, massive extinct rodents which were relatives of today's capybaras, and the wide diversity of huge xenarthrans, the superorder containing sloths, armadillos and anteaters, as well as the notoungulates that lived in the same place, a uniquely South American order of hoofed mammals that are now completely extinct. In fact, there appears to be some direct evidence of Purasaurus's interactions with turtles, as there is a fossil shell from a currently unidentified giant turtle species which displays feeding traces possibly belonging to the caiman. Since modern crocodilians are very well known to prey on these animals, it seems highly likely that large prehistoric turtles could have made up a significant portion of Purasaurus's diet. And although this is the only direct evidence of feeding habits in the giant caiman known to science so far, the adaptations we've talked about and the large body size, in addition to the types of contemporaneous animals that shared its habitat, do indicate that Purasaurus was a predator of some large creatures. And in order to consume these large creatures, Purasaurus may have quite probably employed the use of the death roll. This is a technique observed in living crocodilians in which the animals spin around while biting down on big prey, to incapacitate and dismember the unfortunate creatures within their jaws. A study from 2014 proposed that since the giant prehistoric tax of crocodilomorphs would have been taking on big body prey items, they also would have sometimes needed to perform death rolls. The study used a biomechanical model to analyse how the skulls of Dinosuchus, Sarcosuchus and Purosaurus would have functioned under the torsional stresses inflicted by this action, finding that while Sarcosuchus was probably incapable of using death rolls, Dinosuchus and Purosaurus were very much capable. But, no matter how fearsome this giant predator was, eventually it disappeared from our world. So what could have caused such a beast to go extinct? Well, it seems as though the very thing that made Purasaurus so successful in the first place may actually have brought about its downfall too. By growing to such a huge body size, and specialising to feed on larger prey, the continued existence of this genus would have required some very specific environmental as well as ecological conditions, conditions which then eventually changed over time. The wetlands in which Purasaurus, along with the many other crocodilians, mammals, fish and turtles all lived, disappeared during the Pliocene Epoch, resulting in the extinction of many of the local fauna and a complete shift in the ecosystems. These changes and the loss of the unique wetlands were likely due to the increase in the rate and extent of the Andean Mountain Building Period, which resulted in an Amazon River system more like that seen today arising during the end of the Miocene and into the Pliocene. With Purasaurus's position at the top of the food chain in these localities, the extinction of the giant caiman at the end of the Miocene Epoch would have had a major effect on the rest of the biodiversity here. Since all the species in a particular ecosystem are closely connected by the interactions they have with each other, and the energy transfer between trophic levels, alterations in this network, especially at the levels of top predators, can have a considerable cascading reaction that affects organisms at every point. Therefore, with the death of Purasaurus, the food web it ruled over would have completely changed, possibly resulting in secondary extinctions of other species and a total revision of the entire network. It's interesting to be able to work out this much information about past ecological collapses and the powerful effect that a changing climate can have on the biodiversity of the time, and the ease with which such effects can wipe out one of the most impressive predators in the history of our planet. If you're interested in learning more about such topics as the current climate change and biodiversity crisis we're facing, I would recommend that you go and subscribe to a channel called One World. This is a channel recently started by my mum, who has a PhD in marine biology, and it's going to be mainly focused on various conservation and environmental issues. Currently, there are videos about the controversial decision by Japan to resume commercial whaling, how a planetary diet could help to save our world, 
and part one of a series about the modern climate change crisis. So if you enjoy the sort of content we make here, and are passionate about the conservation of our planet, I would highly recommend subscribing to the channel. I'd also like to thank Pandaman on Discord for recommending we make a video about Purosaurus, and for helping us find sources about this awesome animal. It was a great suggestion. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video about the giant caiman of the Amazon. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.